Guess what day it is? That's right, it's day 16 of the RC advent calendar. Every one of these gaps here is a video that you might not have watched yet. Day 16 today, which is down here. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I know, I know. I am super late to the party. This is the brand new Armour Grom. Well, brand new a few weeks back or maybe even a month back. I've watched a couple of videos on it and it actually looks pretty good. It certainly sounds good. Tough metal gears, even the servo has metal gears. It's certainly loaded up. Comes in three different colors. I've got the green, which is brighter than that, I think. or well, I hope anyway. Some more specs there. I think it's a 118th. It just says small scale on here. I don't think it actually says a size. Oh, it is brighter. Nice. I'm a big fan of the Armour 3S range. In fact, where is it? One of my most favourite in the world ever, in the world, is the wide granite I built. Started as a 3S granite and it's got 4S Creighton arms on it. Mega wide and so much fun to drive. If we don't look at how wide it is, look at the size difference. So cute. We're not here for you anyway. Faster, tougher. Technical pack, instructions. Four AA batteries, so this is 100% ready to run because it also comes with a battery. Three loaders for your shocks, oil shocks, and a tiny little charger for the smart battery. And it's good to see USB-C to USB-C, which means hopefully should charge pretty quick. What's the specs? Output, well, output's 1.5 amps, so I don't know what size the LiPo is. Feels nearly as heavy as the truck. <laughs> Wheel hex that side, and then on this side looks like a two mil hex, one single Allen key. Allen! Right, before we do anything, I want to get the battery on charge so we're not waiting ages for it. I think this has got like, I think you push in there and lift up, just like that, of course. So it's a little 1400 milliamp hour two cell LiPo. Shouldn't take long to charge. There's a really nice bright green. I reckon that's the best color, you know. So this little thing is coming into a world where there is lots of mini bashers about. And it wasn't that many videos ago that we had a look at this. Now I've seen a lot of people comparing this to the other MJX, which is like the full fat one, I call it. Um, separate electronics, will run 3S. This one only runs 2S and it's got um, two in one ESC and stuff like that. But this also has oil shocks, which actually feel nicer than the armor. It's also got tough chassis. It's almost indestructible. It's brushless. It's currently on Banggood for £66. That is about $75, I think. And that in the UK is 129 So in fact, it's almost double the price. So like I was saying, it is coming into a market that has got a lot of competition. So Armour, one of the bigger brands out there, wants a piece of the pie. And having a quick scan over this, it does just look like a shrunken down 3S granite, which is not a bad thing at all, because they're really good. No foams in there, they feel eh, not super soft, but I've seen a lot worse. Nice molded grill there, bumper, rear bumper there, no wheelie bar on this, it's brushed. I don't know if I mentioned that. You probably know that if you've watched any of the other million Grom videos that are out there. So I'm not sure it's gonna need a wheelie bar being brushed. This is not quick release. I can't. <laughs> Can I get my fingers in that? There we go. It's a bit tight, although I'm not complaining about that clean look. Oh, I forgot to mention, it's got just a normal SL2 transmitter. These aren't that bad, they fit in the hand nicely. Nothing really wrong with them, just functional and well, that's about it. So we have got a two-in-one Spectrum ESC. It says 2S LiPo on there, which tells me you can't run it 3S, so 2S only. Three-wire server going in there. Like it says on the box, metal gear servo, which is nice. You've got a little brushed motor under there with a heat sink. I've heard these get quite hot, so um, definitely be careful. Which, if that's true, you want your kids putting your their fingers around that bit if it's getting red hot. We don't want any burnt little fingers at Christmas. Battery tray there, quite a nice size battery tray. As we've seen, metal gears in there. Diffs feel pretty nice. Metal CVDs, I think it's gonna have bearings all round. Double wishbone suspension. Really nice looking solid chassis there. I like the etching on it. All hex hardware. Definitely looking premium. They are oil shocks, they haven't got adjustable collars. Suppose we better go and see how fast it is. The number I've seen battered about is 19, I think. So see if we can get some wind behind us. And I've got an area that's slightly downhill. See if we can uh, push 20 mile an hour. 
Right, no messing about here. <laughs> it's minus three today, so I warmed the battery up, kept it in my car, threw it in, and we're going straight for a speed run to try and beat that 19 mile an hour that I've seen from most people. Come on. Not even set the steer in, it's a bit twitchy. <laughs> I think that's probably enough. Right, was all that effort worth it? Yeah, 20 more an hour. Right, we are going to a skate park in a minute, but first, let's run the battery down on this surface, then we'll go and give it some abuse. Because it's an armor after all. It drives pretty nice. 20 mile an hour is quite good for a brushed car. There's some big brushed one tenth stuff out there that won't even do 20 mile an hour. As with all these short wheelbase little mini trucks, they, uh, they're a bit twitchy, they like to get that back end round. But hopefully, it's going to take an abuse like all the others. Send it! <laughs> right, I will shorten this battery pack run up to 10 seconds for you, and I'll see you at the skate park. Skate park number one. It's a bit icy. Not worried about this, I'm just worried about myself. Be careful at my age not to slip over. Wah! Or hit myself. Luckily it's only little. So I think I said, didn't I, that there's a tough market, this little mini basher market. So this thing really has to survive. If it wants to cut it in today's Whoa, <laughs> mini basher market. I panicked midair then. <laughs> Whoa. I think I'm gonna have to do a list of acceptable damage at skate parks, I reckon. Oh, check that one out. Yeah, I think acceptable damage, um, we need a list, especially at concrete skate parks. I think motors moving, acceptable. Yeah, shock ends. What else do you reckon? Steer, like turnbuckles for steering. That's a common one. I think that's it. We don't need a long list, do we? I think motors moving is the most common I've had. Not just on the small stuff, but the big stuff as well. So the good thing about these little ones, especially at 20 mile an hour. Oh, <laughs> I was about to say, you're not going to be able to do much damage at that speed. You are if you drive stupid like that. That's what I was trying to do. I had a little mini down here the other day, the PD Racing, and I couldn't get that trimmed to go straight either. This is the same. Every time I trim it on here, it just ends up going a different direction. Killer of all RC cars, a front flip. <laughs> I think if the suspension was a little bit softer, not quite as bouncy. I mean, they're oil, but they're still a little bit bouncy. I'd have landed that one. Oh. <laughs> so the brushed MJX would front flip this ramp here, so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that do. This thing is tough. <laughs> Nailed it. So according to the highly regarded Met Office, I meant to have some sunshine. Come on. <laughs> you done me dirty. Sunshine. One till three. Luckily, this thing's bright green, so <laughs> we're not going to miss it. This has done well so far. I'm really impressed with it. It's done very well. I brought it to this skate park. So we're on, so we're on pack two, skate park two. Well, pack three, skate park two. First pack was on that dirt and gravel. And this thing's like, yeah, whatever, bro. <laughs> whatever. Test me. So I brought it to this skate park because recently, when it wasn't minus three degrees C, 
I broke that little MJX that I showed you at the beginning. I broke that here. Just trying to do a front flip off there. I'll tell you what, I'll show you. Oh no. So I brought this here. See how it holds up on, well, this skate park and to see if we can front flip it off of here. Whoa, <laughs> oh my days. We landed it as well. Oh, I'm gonna have to count how many that was. <laughs> That was not planned. It must have just caught a little lip there. God, bro. Oh. Oh. That is the first time that that's come off. Oh, man, nearly nailed it. This is definitely the best jump around here for front flips. Right, I'm gonna do something I don't usually do. I'm gonna see, well, I'm gonna see if I can break it. I'm gonna try and replicate the front flip from that MJX. Let's see how this holds up. Now it's minus three today. I think I was on power with the MJX. That's why I broke that CVD. And this is for science purposes only. I think I said earlier, nothing's gone wrong with it. It has split the body. We have split the body, I forgot to mention. It just keeps taking it. <laughs> yeah, boy. Oh, that was big. Wow, well, I don't think it's going to break. And believe me, I am trying. I'm doing everything you shouldn't do. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Something's gone. I think that's the rear diff gone. Oh, that took some abuse though. Let's go and see what happened. Yeah, so it looks like it's the actual diff if I hold that. So rear diff going round in there, but I'm holding the wheel still. So let's whip it out. This is pretty nice to work on as well, really easy. So I was just taking this apart and I thought that I'd split it, but it's meant to be like that. There's some little keyways, some little like pins that stick up or bits of plastic. I'm trying to work out what's happened to it. I can't see any of the gears that are stripped inside. Ah, uh, that might be the problem. That is what the diff cup should look like. You see it's got like the little cutouts there. They basically slot into that. If you look at this one, it looks like there's something missing. And then if you look in there, you can see where it's snapped off. So that's obviously fixed like that. My guess is when I landed on power, the impact and it turning just broke that off. Now, I'm not gonna say that's a weak point because I don't think I've seen anyone else do that. However, having a metal spur, metal pinion, and obviously metal gears for the diffs as well. You've got plastic inside. I don't know whether that's a good thing, but I'm happy with it. I think that thing went so well and I put loads of abuse through it. Do not recommend doing anything like that really at a skate park. I just wanted to see how far it would go. So Armour, premium brand. It definitely comes across as being premium. It was really well built, really nice, it's tough. But the biggest thing I see when we're comparing premium brands to like a cheap Chinese one, everyone always says, but what about spares availability? I don't want to wait two, three, four weeks for spares. Well, let's see how long my Grom is going to be broken for. Out of stock, they're out of stock. That's out of stock as well. In stock if I lived in America. And it looks like it is due in on the 2nd of December. Before you look at the date and think, oh, hang on a minute, that was ages ago. This video is pre-recorded. Today is the 1st of December. I will order it and see when it arrives. Right, done. We'll see if it turns up. I've got a few days before I need this video finished, so we're gonna wait, see if it arrives. 2,000 years later. So it's been a week now, 
and I've still not got a new diff. It went from the 2nd of December to back order, so I'm gonna have to finish the video off before I get it fixed. And I said just a minute ago that I don't think anyone else has had this problem. It seems that there's quite a few people that have had this problem with the diff. Go onto the Armour website, look at the Grom, look at the reviews, and quite a few people have had issues with the rear diff, so maybe it is a weak point. And yes, I did really send it. If there's a few people having diff issues, then maybe it is a weak point. So that's it for day 16, it's been a little while. So yeah, day 16, more empty spaces in the calendar now because well, I've been waiting for my diff to turn up and it hasn't arrived. Anyway, cheers for watching, I'll see you tomorrow for day 17.